Hi everyone, I'm Bernard. I'm going to give you a short intro about a project I have been working on for the last two and a half years. It's called Lunatic. It's an attempt to bring some of the properties of Erlang to all programming languages that compile to WebAssembly, including Rust. We have especially been focused on Rust because Rust has great support for WebAssembly as a compilation target. Just to walk you through today's presentation, so first of all, I would like to answer the question, why Erlang? What are some of the properties that make it great? And why are they hard to achieve just with regular Rust? And how we bring them to Rust through WebAssembly? And in the end, I'm just gonna create a simple Hello World application to demonstrate how you can build uh, lunatic Rust applications. So why Erlang? I would say there are three main properties that make Erlang great. It's the concurrency model, the approach to fault tolerance and soft real time. Let's first look at the concurrency model. So in Rust, we have two concurrency models. Uh, those are threads and async tasks. Both of them live inside one heap memory. This means all threads and all async tasks uh, share one heap space. Erlang is in this regard a bit different like each process gets their own heap memory and we inherit this approach in Lunatic. This makes each process embarrassing in parallel because it doesn't share any memory with other processes. The whole communication between them happens through message passing. So the programming model is more similar to an actor approach than to traditional Rust uh, applications. The second property is fault tolerance and Erlang has proven to create some of the most resilient applications out there. The approach to fault tolerance is also related to each process having a separate heap. Basically, the idea here is that long running, long running processes will usually get into a state that could not have been predicted by the developer. So the best course of action here is just to turn the process off and on again. So we reset the state and it starts again from a well-known correct state. And uh, this is hard to do with uh, async tasks in Rust because as I mentioned, they live in the same heap memory. So if one uh, task mess messes up the some state that's referenced by other tasks, even if we turn off this task and turn it on again, the corrupt state is still gonna be referenced by other tests. So we would need to turn off the whole application. The same is true if we have a memory leak, for example. If a async task leaks some memory and we shut off the test, the leak memory is still there. We cannot get rid of it. It lives in the side of the same heap. In uh, Lunatic and Erlang, if we drop the task, the process, like we clear the whole heap. So we get rid of all leaked memory and we can restart and start from a fresh new state just for this particular process. So we have the guarantee like that the failure is not escaping the scope of a process. So we can limit the propagation of failure in the system. This also allows us to create interesting architecture where we can build supervision tree of processes supervising other processes so we can react to failures in one process and then restart it or uh, express dependencies between processes. If one fails, like also let the other fail and create interesting ar architectures that way. And the third property is soft real time. If you wrote any async Rust uh, application, you probably came across this warning. So you should never put compute heavy logic inside of your async tests because it will block the scheduler. So while this logic is executing, the execution thread will never be able to release the tasks. You need to manually yield from it. So this is uh, solved in Lunatic and in Erlang through preemptive uh, scheduling. So we force a process to yield after uh, a number of instructions. So like the developer does not even need to think about it. If you write any code, even an infinite loop, we will eventually yield uh, back. And this creates really responsive applications. How do we achieve those properties? Through WebAssembly. Like it might be a bit counterintuitive because uh, WebAssembly was originally developed for the browser. So it was a way to run high performance application 
in a safe and secure way inside of the browser, but turns out the properties that make it great to run application inside of the browser make it also as a great uh, target for backend application. Uh, what we do is basically we take your Rust application, compile it to WebAssembly, and then spawn WebAssembly instances for each new uh, lunatic process, and each WebAssembly instance gets their own heap, and it cannot escape basically the heap, and that's a guarantee we get from WebAssembly, because originally it was developed for the browser, and uh, their security really matters. You should not be able to access uh, the memory of the host, uh, the browser, from your WebAssembly uh, process. So, like, each heap memory is completely isolated inside of Lunatic. And what we also do, we analyze the WebAssembly instructions and insert preemption points. So, basically, we have our reduction counter. Uh, once a certain number of instructions is executed, we just yield back to the scheduler. So, this uh, assures resp uh, responsiveness. So, just to visualize this process, we go from a Rust code to a WebAssembly module. And uh, then, from this WebAssembly module, we spawn many lunatic processes. Those are basically WebAssembly instances, where each instance gets their own heap uh, and stack. From a runtime perspective, WebAssembly instances are wrapped into async features that are scheduled on top of an async scheduler. So, demo time. In Lunatic, we try to stay close to the Rust toolchain, so the developer experience should feel really close to writing regular Rust application. You just need a few additional tools to make everything work. First of all, you need the Lunatic Runtime. You can install it uh, by running cargo install Lunatic uh, Runtime. I have it, uh, I think, uh, already installed, so it's go gonna be ignored. So, the next thing you need to do is add WebAssembly as a compilation target to Rust with Rust app target add wasm32 wasi. Okay, so I also already have it installed, so n nothing happens. The next, uh, we want to create a cargo project. Cargo new, hello world. So, let's open it. So, what you can do is just uh, compile the project to WebAssembly. It's like, I'm gonna show the code, it's just a hello world application. Cargo build and then target equals wasm32 wasi. This creates a WebAssembly module inside of the target folder. Then we just need to pass the generated WebAssembly module to Lunatic. Lunatic uh, target wasm32. Uh, this is a debug build and uh, it's called hello world .wasm. And it loads, Lunatic, the runtime loads the WebAssembly file, just in time compiles it to the right architecture and executes it. Okay, this was pretty, pretty simple, but uh, doing this is kind of annoying, like every time adding a target and prefixing it with the Lunatic keyword. So, to streamline a bit our development environment, to do so, we create a cargo folder in the root of the project. Cargo, and then we can add a file called config.toml. First, we specify uh, the target. Build target equals wasn 32 wasi. I think this needs to be in quotes. Second of all, for this specific target, we want to specify a runner. A runner means uh, just when we run uh, cargo commands, it will prefix uh, or build file, the .wasm file, uh, with uh, the runner we specify in this file. So, it's gonna be lunatic, also in quotes. So, now what we can do is just cargo run, and it does the things for us. It builds directly to the wasm32 wasi target, and uh, instead of just executing a file, because it's you cannot really execute a dot wasm file, um, it prefixes it with lunatic, so it executes this for, for us. Alright, this is a plain WebAssembly application, 
using uh, the WebAssembly system interfaces to print to the standard output, but we don't actually take advantage of any of the properties that the Lunatic VM offers us. To take advantage of some of the properties, we will add Lunatic uh, as a dependency. This allows us now to use the full power of the VM. For example, we can spawn new processes using the spawn macro. We just pass in uh, a closure. Let's print out hello world from the new process. Now if you run this, nothing is printed out. The issue here is that the newly spawned process doesn't get a chance to run before the main process finishes and the whole VM is shut down. To delay a bit the main process, we can use the sleep function. This will delay the execution for 100 milliseconds, enough to print out the output. If we want to link processes together, we can use the spawn link macro. This basically means that the newly spawned process is going to be linked to the main process. So if it panics, it will also kill the main process. We can read here the output that the process failed and notified one link and the main process was also killed as a result of link failure. I mentioned earlier processes don't share any heap memory together. This means that the closure from which the process is spawned cannot capture any value from the main process. If we create a variable a with the value 5 and we try to use it. We're going to get a compilation error because the closure from which the process is spawned can only be a non-capturing closure that can be casted to a pointer. It cannot be a closure that captures a value from the outside process. And this wouldn't even make sense in Lunatic because the heaps are completely separated so the pointer at the value 5 for the a variable would be completely different inside of this closure than it's in the outside process. And that's also true for static variable. If you create a static variable, each process is going to have its own in independent instance of it. So modifying it, it inside of one process will not affect the other. The heaps are always going to be completely separated from each other. Uh, so how do you pass uh, a value between processes? Through messages. We can use a simple syntax inside of the spawn macro just by passing it here as a variable and we need to give it a type. The compiler will now complain that uh, it expected the process to return an empty value, but it's returning an integer. There's a special kind of process that can return a value, it's called a task. Calling the result method on a child process that's also a task will block the caller until the result is received from the child. In Lunatic we make the API feel close to Rust. So this means that you can spawn processes from closures, you can return values or the closures can take in values but in the background everything is transformed to message passing. 
So the values are ex se like serialized by one process and uh, sent to one other. Lunatic has many more features. You can, for example, spawn processes that have a limited amount of memory available and compute. So you can sandbox some computations and if they run out of the fuel, they will panic. You can even forbid inside of new processes the usage of certain APIs like networking access or file system access. And you can use distributed lunatic to spawn processes on uh, different machines in your cluster. And this is especially interesting because those machines can run different operating systems or even CPU architectures, but because we use WebAssembly, the WebAssembly module is going to be transferred to the machine and just in time compiled for the right uh, art architecture. It would be a bit hard now to demo all these features, but I hope I got you a bit interested in Lunatic. And if you would like to play a bit more around with it and uh, tr try it out, you can visit our GitHub repository uh, where you can find instructions and uh, some other example applications that are more complex. That's everything from me. Thank you very much.